Hello students, I hope you all are doing well. In the previous video, we started up with the second lesson, the river valley civilizations, where we started up with the first civilization, that was the Mesopotamian civilization. Now before starting today's lesson, let's have a quick recap of what we had already started. So we'll start with the meaning of civilization. Now civilization is an advanced stage a system of human social development. Then we studied the earliest civilizations that flourished in the world. The first one, the Mesopotamian civilization. The next, Chinese civilization. Then the Indus Valley civilization. And then the, the Egyptian civilization. Now, the word Mesopotamia means land between rivers. The Mesopotamian society was divided into three classes. The first class belonged to the priests, officials and warriors. The second belonged to the businessmen, professionals and skilled laborers. And the third category was of slaves. Now the family was a very close knitted structure where father was the head of the family and women were given importance. So with this we'll start uh, with today's lesson. So let's begin. Mesopotamia means land between rivers and the rivers were river Tigris and Euphrates. It is modern day Iraq which comprise part of Iran also and it is situated in Western Asia. Around 4000 BCE to 3500 BCE the great Mesopotamian civilization flourished in this area. Now the southernmost region of this civilization was called Sumer and its people were known as Sumerians. Now we come to Mesopotamian society, town planning. The Sumerians were pioneers in the development of Mesopotamian civilization. They built city-states, each under a chief or king. Each city-state had its own laws and its own army. In fact, each uh, state was a small nation. Now these states were independent of one another. They had their own god, government and leaders. Now we'll see some of the important cities in Mesopotamian civilization. They were Urk, Ur, Lagash, Babylon and Nineveh. The excavations at Ur, which was one of the greatest cities of Mesopotamian civilization, have revealed that the city was divided into three main areas, the sacred area, the walled city on a mount, and an outer town. Now the sacred area consisted of a main temple called Ziggurat. Hence Ziggurat was an ancient Mesopotamian temple which was dedicated to the patron god of the city. The temple was made up of many stories and each story was smaller than the one below it. Ziggurats were a Sumerian temples which were made up of sun-dried bricks to carry rainwater away from Ziggurat. They were dedicated to the chief god or goddess of a particular city-state. They were terrace-shaped temples and they were dedicated to the polytheistic gods. Now, the sacred area was also the administrative center in the city. The offices and storehouses have been found here. The walled city and outer town were the areas where people lived. The next we come to Mesopotamian religion. Now the Mesopotamians believed in many gods and goddesses. They also worshipped different forces of nature. Now polytheism is the worshipping and believing of many gods. Now each city considered one god to be its protector. The Mesopotamians worshipped many gods like Enlil who was the supreme god and god of air, Ishtar, the goddess of fertility and life, En, god of heaven, Enki, god of water and underworld, and Shamash, god of sun and giver of law. The Mesopotamians believed in life after death. They buried their dead with objects they used when alive. Now we'll see the occupations 
of the people in the Mesopotamian society. Now agriculture was the main occupation of the people and farmers grew barley, corn, dates, fruits and vegetables. As you can see in the picture that people are engaged in agriculture. They had a good system of irrigation to ensure a regular supply of water throughout the year. And because of river Tigris and Euphrates, they had a good amount of water for irrigation purposes. Then there were metal workers like blacksmiths and goldsmiths which made great advance in their craft. Mesopotamians were the first to use the potter's wheel and make glassware. They domesticated animals such as sheep, goats, pigs, donkeys, cows. Next we come to trade. Now the two rivers they provided a way to ship the goods. Now the Mesopotamian people they traded with many countries. The trade was both internal and foreign and uh, the trade flourished here. The Mesopotamians they traded with India, Egypt and other Mediterranean countries and here in this map you can see the trade route between Mesopotamia and Indus Valley civilizations. The traders used to keep their records on clay tablets which were the seals and here in this picture you can see the seals. Now these seals marked that transaction or trade has taken place between the two places. Now there were many seals of Indus cities which were found in Mesopotamia and Mesopotamian seals were found in Indus Valley which proved that trade existed between these two civilizations. Now in this picture you can see some seals now these seals were brought to Mesopotamia by the Harappans. Now in the next picture you can see some seals. Now these are cylindrical seals and they were found in Mesopotamia. The next we come to the art and architecture of the Mesopotamian society. Now the Mesopotamians made their buildings with baked bricks, stone, wood etc. Now in this picture you can see the hanging gardens of Babylon and the hanging gardens of Babylon were built by King Nebuchadnezzar II and is among the seven wonders of the world. Now he got them built for his wife who was a native of a green and mountainous land. In the next picture you can see the ziggurat which is also a fine example of architecture. One of the greatest contributions in the field of architecture was the introduction of architectural features. Now in this picture you can see the column. In the next picture you can see the domes, then the vaults and arches. Next we come to script and literature. Now the Sumerians developed a system of writing which was known as cuneiform. Cuneiform is one of the world's first known written languages. This began as pictographs by the Sumerians of Mesopotamia. The script was wedge shaped. The Sumerians wrote on clay tablets. They used punches to write on the tablets. Then these tablets were baked to be stored in an archive. The archaeologists have found thousands of these tablets in the archives. Now the script is written from right to left with a pen made of reed or bone called stylus. Now in this picture you can see the clay tablet and you can see the reed stylus and the bone stylus. Now in this picture you can see the clay tablet. Now each tablet formed a page. Now the epic of Gilgamesh is the most popular epic which describes the tale of a legendary hero of that name and the name of the legendary hero was Gilgamesh. The next picture which you can see is of a library. Now the first library in the world existed in Mesopotamia. Now here the books were classified according to their subjects. Next we come to progress in science. Now the Mesopotamians made great progress in the field of sciences. They were experts in mathematics, medicine and astronomy and were the first to develop algebra and geometry. 
They use the figure of 60 for measuring time in hours, minutes and seconds. They were the first to divide a circle into 360 degree and the day and night into 12 hours each. Now Mesopotamians, specifically the Babylon, used a mathematical system which was based on 60. Now some parts of the base 60 system still remains today like the 360 degree in a circle, 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in one hour. The Mesopotamians also invented a calendar of 12 months with 30 days each. Now the calendar was based on the cycles of the moon that is the number of days between the appearance of two new moons was set as a month and 12 cycles made up a year. They gave different names to different stars. Next we come to Hammurabi's code of law. Now Hammurabi was one of the greatest kings of Babylon. He ruled from 1792 to 1750 BCE and he became famous for his code of laws. He suggested different punishments for those who committed an offense. Now the punishments depended on the nature and circumstances of crime and the position of the offender in the society. Hammurabi ordered that the laws have to be engraved in stone and placed in public location for everyone to see. Now these laws were 282 in number and carved on both sides of an 8 feet high stone and it was placed in the temple of Marduk, the sun god. It was the first instance of codification of laws. Now Hammurabi's code was a great step in making laws applicable to all the people of Mesopotamia. The other nations took inspiration from these laws and framed similar laws for their own governments. Next we come to the decline of Mesopotamian civilization. Now after Hammurabi, the Hittites ruled from 1600 BCE to 750 BCE. The Assyrians founded an empire by 750 but the Assyrians' greatness came to an end when nomads destroyed the Nineveh in 7th and the 6th centuries BC. Then the river Euphrates changed its course. Next, the people migrated to other areas. And the last one, the forces of nature eroded and buried this great civilization. With this, we come to an end of the second lesson, the river valley civilizations, that is the Mesopotamian civilization. I hope you all have understood it well. I'll be sending you the question and answers. Kindly complete the question and answers in the notebook. I'll also send you the exercises which are from the back of the lesson. Kindly complete the exercises in the textbook. I'll be sending you some extra notes which will be from between the lesson. Kindly go through it or write it down in a rough copy so that uh, when your test will be starting, the online test will be starting, you can go uh, through it for a better performance. So till then, stay safe, stay healthy and have a good day. Thank you.